Hi there, I bring some exciting news today. And remember, this is where you heard it first on Frames TM. Watch it till the end and subscribe because this story will unfold over the next two to four weeks. Now let's bite into the story directly. Do you remember that awful quiet last year by Nikon just before the Z9 launch? Nikon were to launch a few lenses, but there, were, there was crickets from them. It felt so terrible back then that Nikon Rumors actually posted a thread saying Nikon is sleeping again. Lots of people started talking about that, especially that post. And uh, some people resonated with that thought. Uh, and some, including me, spoke about that article and said that it's very likely not the case. Nikon is not sleeping, they're just preparing for the Z9. It was exactly a year ago, around this time last year. And today we have a moment like that again. Not for everyone, but uh, definitely for some. It's been about six months or a little more than that, that uh, since the launch of the Z9. But since then, we really haven't heard much from Nikon on new cameras. But I have news for you today. Back then, it was a race for Nikon to show the world that it is still a part of the big three. Because some had started speaking of Fuji being part of the top three bracket and left Nikon out. Well, we've seen how Nikon reclaimed its spot since then. But many of us, like many like me, have been asking for something a bit more manageable, a bit more affordable, something a little more practical for most people, something that uses some of the key tech from the Z9 in a cheaper and a smaller body. And I'm very glad to report to you that we might see a crucial launch coming our way in the next one month. The information I have is coming from a trusted source, of course, which is not Nikon Rumors. Not to say that Nikon Rumors is not trusted, that the source is not Nikon Rumors. And I cannot discuss what the source is, of course. What I can tell you is that this is going to be a mirrorless camera that will be priced between 1100 and 2300 US dollars. I know it's a wide price range, but that's the information that I have so far. The camera is being tested and it is in the hands of some people. From what I know, it is certain that this new upcoming Nikon does use some of the tech from the Z9, both hardware and software. Yes, I can confirm that it will have the capabilities of the XP7 processor or the Z9 processor. It is likely to match at least some of the autofocus capabilities that we have already seen on the Z9. I feel um, we'll see more compromises some compromise in, in the range of subject detection that it can operate. But uh, what I expect this camera to have is a new tracking feature, not the yellow um, box that you see on the Z6 and the rest of the Z line of cameras, but the 3D tracking that Nikon has implemented on the Z9. Honestly, I'm going to be a little disappointed if I don't see that in this upcoming camera. I also believe that it will carry the animal and bird detect features from the Z9. And because it will be a simpler body, meaning a body not with as many functionalities as the Z9. The processor will have more than enough bandwidth to super efficiently handle functions that are not so demanding. Um, I can tell you that I do not yet know about the sensor. I don't know about the EVF. I don't have the details about the back LCD. I'm not aware of uh, what frames per second this is going to shoot. I don't know what kind of com competing cameras this will fight against. Meaning I don't know what Canon and Sony equivalent cameras this is going to be pitched against. Which means I cannot confirm at this point whether this is going to be a full frame body or a crop sensor body. So there are a lot of unknowns, granted. But what I'm giving you today is the certainty that there has been progress that something's been up at Nikon and Nikon has been, have been super quiet about it. It reminds me of last year's ZFC launch, if you remember, which also happened around this time of the year. I'm telling you, even back then, Nikon was very quiet. I mean, there was not much conversation. We're hearing rumors about ZFC and then one day it was a reality. I'm telling you that, what I'm telling you today is that Nikon wasn't just sitting on its success and laurels after the Z9 launch. I'm telling you that Nikon have been working on the next bunch of launches, especially the cameras, although they haven't spoken about that much. In fact, um, if I remember correctly, Nikon rumors actually had done a post where they said that, you know, uh, they said that they're not expecting Nikon to launch many uh, bodies this year. But if this news that I have is true, we, we surely have at least two or three bodies 
um, uh, coming this year. And this will be the first camera launch after the Mighty Z9. So I'm very, very excited. I'm looking forward to using it, whatever it may be. Whatever this camera is, I'm going to get it because it's going to be a cheaper version of something uh, of much of the tech that Z9 has today. I'll get more information over the next 10 days and I'll share uh, the, the, whatever information I get, I'm going to share that with you the moment I receive it. So, uh, you know, I haven't given you much in the sense that I have told you that uh, I do not know about the sensor, I, I don't know about the megapixels, I don't know about what kind of video capability is going to have. I haven't, I, I, I haven't told you whether it's going to be a crop sensor camera or a full frame camera. But what I've told you is this, I've told you that this is going to use some of the Z9 tech, that this is going to be within uh, between 1100 and 2300 US dollars that um, it's going to have that 3D tracking, very likely to have that 3D tracking system implemented in this. So given all this, what what kind of camera do you think this is going to be? What do you want next from Nikon? What do you want this camera to be if it is uh, priced between uh, this range, within this range? Um, so let's have a discussion. What do you think this is going to be a full frame or an APS-C camera? I'm, actually, I want both. I want a full frame because I'm waiting for the Z8 and I also want a APS-C camera which is going to at least come close to the D8, uh, D500. So um, that's it from my side. Let me know uh, what you think of this and I'm going to see you very soon with another one.